Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in. We have a lot to talk about. To my super chat, thank you so much. I can't do this without you. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have $20 million in venture capital funding like some people, like some channels. So this is just um, up to everyone watching. Um, and I just thank you so very, very much uh, for your support. So if you want to talk about anything via super chat, let me know. Paul Bartlett starting it off. Thank you so much, Paul Bartlett. As always, and always for your kind words as well, Paul, thank you. Mikey, Eric, Aunt Jenny, everybody here, hello. Thank you so very much. Happy 4th of July. Have a happy, safe, and wonderful 4th of July, everybody. Um, we have a lot to talk about, and it's very interesting that it's very interesting that we have a recession. We have gas prices that are through the roof. They're going to, oil will get back to record highs. It's actually going to, um, oil will surpass the all-time high of 147. It will get to over $150 per barrel. And Bitcoin will get to below $10,000. It'll hit $10,000 and get below $10,000. And we are in a recession I talk about that on my other two channels, so hit subscribe there to the other two channels. That's the Nuclear Confrontation and, and Stock Market Crash channel. Very, very uplifting. You'll love it. And the um, Oil Prices 150 Bit Bitcoin 10K Recession channel. So definitely subscribe also to those channels. But we have, ladies and gentlemen, we have a... We're in a recession, number one. Number one, we're in a recession. Gas prices and energy prices are through the roof. Diesel in California is almost $7 uh, per gallon. Okay, diesel fuel, if it gets to $7 or $8 per gallon nationally, we're looking at a prolonged recession. We have already two quarters of negative economic growth. The second quarter is negative according to uh, the Atlanta Fed GDP Now estimates. So according to the Atlanta Federal Reserve, they have a GDP uh, estimate that they always utilize, uh, a forecast, and it's negative. We have negative GDP growth for two consecutive quarters, Okay. Negative GDP growth for two consecutive quarters, ladies and gentlemen. And we not only have negative GDP growth for two, two consecutive quarters, um, not only do we have re a, re a recession, high gas prices, inflation is at 8 to 9%. D'Artagno, hello! Inflation, yes, Trump 2024. Um, respectfully, though, like if if sometimes uh, they they'll kick me off, Dear Tanya, if you keep writing the same thing, because the algorithm. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. The algorithm actually um, will like mess with the stream. So if you could just uh, maybe switch up the statement, that'd be fantastic. Dear Tanya, thank you so very much. It's that's. That's right, Trump 2024, uh, absolutely. Um, but um, so we have inflation at 8 to 9%. It's only going to get worse because energy prices are a huge part of inflation. So um, Lisa, hello. D'Artagnan, thank you. G. Corber, Mikey, hello. Um, so... We have, it's actually negative 2% going into the second quarter. D'Artagno, thank you. Negative 2% going into the second quarter. We're, we're in a recession. Are we going to have a prolonged recession? By the way, this is all the fault of mashed potato brains Joe. So it's 100% his fault. But we are right now in a terrible, terrible economic environment. Okay. And they're focused on something Trump didn't do yes, yet again, okay? He did not. So, I mean, oil prices through the roof, 8 to 9% inflation, interest rates going up. So we have interest rates going up. Um, 
interest rates going up as the economy contracts. You tell me if that's normal, if that's good for the future of the United States economy. Okay? Paul Bartlett, thank you again for starting off the Super Chat. To my Super Chat, I can't do this without you. I appreciate you. Thank you. So we have 8 to 9% in, uh, inflation. We have a recession. We have interest rates going up while the economy is contracting. We have a diesel fuel shortage. Okay? A diesel fuel shortage. And we have shortage of components in diesel, urea, other uh, chemicals. We have food shortages. So Biden's approval rating is at all-time lows. He has a lower approval rating, and he has a, he has, he's, he's below Trump in terms of approval rating and favorability rating at this point in their presidencies. Okay, so within the month of June and July, he's been below Donald Trump. Mashed Potato Brains Joe has been below Donald Trump in terms of approval and uh, in terms of favorability ratings. Now, you have to ask yourself something. Did, he, did Trump have any support from media? And how much support does, does Mashed Potato Brains Joe have? Okay, they're going after Trump because they're petrified he's going to run again and he's going to announce almost certainly within the next uh, week, two weeks. Okay, once, they, once he announces, I mean, tell your friends about this channel, tell your friends about the uh, Oil Prices 150 and the Nuclear Confrontation channel, my two other channels, they're below in every one of the description and pinned comments of my segments because I think we'll finally eventually get over 200,000 subs. Uh, the news is going to heat up. The paradigm, American, the American political paradigm is going to change completely. Okay, they thought basically after last January, or after two Januarys ago, they thought that Trump was, they tried to actually remove Trump from American political life. But you can't really do that. Okay, amazing Colonel, hello, you can't do that. He's a former president. Okay, you can't, you can't, um, you can't um, remove this man because you, ha you have over 70 million Americans who want him back. You have half the electorate who wants him back. You can't remove him uh, if you have half the electorate, half the electorate that want him. See, the the problem is that he is judged by a standard that Democrats and never Trump Republicans aren't judged by. Um, he'll be the next Grover Cleveland, hopefully to the president uh, with non-consecutive terms, okay? So, over Cleveland, only president to leave the White House and return for a second term four years later. It'll be Grover Cleveland and Donald Trump, hopefully, okay? And, hello, D.C., hello. Um, he will get impeached. You'll have Joe getting impeached. Ken, hello. You'll have Joe getting impeached numerous times because he was accepting money from his son, Hunter, actually pr likely hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in business deals, promising favors to people and actually imp you know, following through on those favors. So you have one email saying, how can you use your influence on, on the company's behalf? See, there's the email that wasn't around when Trump was getting impeached. Okay, and then you have uh, Joe s forcing out a prosecutor that was going to investigate that company. Then they say, well, the emails don't, the, the timeline doesn't add up. Why would it not add up? W do, you think that, do you think that an unspoken agreement or an, an, an arrangement between a corporation that's paying someone almost $100,000 a, a month a million two hundred thousand a year, basically, to do nothing, to do absolutely nothing, but offer access to the highest levels of the United States government. You think that arrangement only begins when an email that actually states, "How can you use your influence on the company's behalf?" There's an email that actually states, 
How can you use your influence on the company's behalf? Could you imagine if Donald Trump or Eric uh, Trump or Donald Trump Jr. or Jared Kushner had an email that stated, could you, how can you use your influence on the company's behalf? And then could you imagine if one of anyone, Trump, anyone associated with Trump, forced out a prosecutor in another country, no less, G. Corber! Thank you, G. G. Corber, thank you so very, very much. Happy 4th. Happy 4th of July to you, Paul, in Australia. Thank you. Happy 4th of July to everybody here. G. Corber, thank you, and thank you for being a member, G. Bud, hello. Tammy, hello. Johnny, Lawrence, Jason, hello. So, Jessica, hello. So, G. Corber, thank you so very much. Could you imagine if the reverse were true? He'll get impeached numerous times. Democrats do not, the Democrats and media, and this is why Trump will never lose popularity with half of the electorate. Here's the, here's the secret. Here, if, if anybody ever asks you and you have to like, and it's like a civil conversation, here's the reason why Donald Trump is so popular. It has nothing to do, it, it, part of the reason has absolutely nothing to do with him and his accomplishments, which are profound, like his accomplishments are profound. The reason is that everyone knows that media and Democrats do not judge Donald Trump in the manner that they judge Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton or President Obama or anyone. They don't critique or judge or condemn the actions of others even when those actions are more egregious than Trump's, okay? If Donald Trump said, you are not who you are if you don't vote for me, like Joe did with Charlemagne the God, it would be the end of the world. G. Corber, thank you. Adam on 31458! July, happy July 4th, thank you. Happy 4th of July to you. Adam on 31458, thank you. I hope all is well. Adam on 31458, thank you so very, very, very much. Happy 4th of July to you. Thank you. To my super chat. Thank you so much. I can't do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. But the reason is that if were you ever in like high school or middle school and were you ever like, did the teacher ever pick on you while people were, were, were you know, desecrating the back of the schoolroom, or I don't even know, like, you know, spray painting the back of the schoolroom, cutting up books, and then you sneeze, and then the teacher says, oh, you know, uh, what are you doing? That's American media and Trump. Everything is sensationalized. He threw his... Do you understand? Cassidy Hutchinson can say that he threw his dinner at the wall. He threw his dinner at the wall. Okay, he threw his dinner at the wall, and the ketchup, and the ketchup was dripping. <laughs> but you can't even put two and two together with emails that say that Hunter gives ten percent of his income derived from clear violations of the law and quid pro quo schemes to Joe. It literally says ten percent for the big man, and. 10% for 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 uh Joe which was then uh his the business associate that came out a witness who was would testify under oath stated oh yes I worked with Hunter Tony Bubalinski worked with Hunter stated that all of these emails were written to Hunter by wealthy individuals corporations countries or wealthy individuals or business leaders in other countries because they wanted access to the United States government. You have a voicemail even from Joe to Hunter saying, you are in the clear. Okay? He gives 10% of his money to the big man and you still can't put two and two together. And then you have uh, Hunter saying, oh yeah, you know, uh, he's been funding Joe's uh, pocketbook for years and years and years. I mean, the thing is, like, 
Trump doesn't have these emails. He doesn't have these incredible. When it comes to uh, emails from the, like the Clinton Foundation, Bill Clinton Inc. Oh, leave me out of this. When it comes to um, when it comes to the DNC emails that the cheating Bernie Sanders. When it comes to Hunter's emails, how come Democrats have an endless stream of emails pointing to corruption? Trump has a dinner plate thrown at the wall or gossip and hearsay that he tried to commandeer a limousine. I mean, why don't they just say that he was in like a, a swiveling uh, leather swiveling chair with his back to Cassidy Hutchinson caressing uh, a cat? Like Dr. Evil. Okay. Why doesn't he just do that? Well, why don't they just say that? <laughs> like, you know, that he was just going to, you know, sell the planet to Martians or, you know, something. Mm. Ronald, thank you. Change it up. Hello. DPK, hello. They have nothing on Trump. That's why he's popular, because they have nothing on him. People don't, the average American really doesn't care about his personality because they were watching him, like every Democrat that despises Trump was watching The Apprentice. Stephen Colbert was watching The Apprentice. Jimmy Kimmel, all of these people used to watch episodes of The Apprentice, okay? Or at least their audience was. Everyone in Hollywood now who, like, who thinks that they're making a name for themselves going after Trump would have embraced his rear end six, seven, eight years ago. D. Artanio Valentino. Hello, sir. Happy 4th of July to you, D. Artanio. Thank you. Happy 4th of July to you. Have a safe, safe and wonderful 4th of July. David, hello. So... The, the the inability, and this is like, I see like, there are these historians, like liberal historians and economists and these people, like they can never give Trump uh, his due. They can never admit that Trump presided over a great economy. They could never admit that we had record low unemployment, hundreds of thousands of new manufacturing jobs. Um, they could never admit that he didn't make it difficult for oil and gas companies to operate. Unlike Biden, who was literally sued by oil and gas associations and was sued, um, oblong, hello, <laughs> um, like Joe, Joe, Joe Biden has the unique distinction. Check this out. So of being sued by both environmental, uh, uh, uh groups and oil and gas associations in 14 states. Uh, based, you know, because of his oil and gas policies. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that, ladies and gentlemen? Nobody is happy with this man. No, like, he came in saying we're going to save the planet from climate change, and then he's flooding the country with strategic uh, oil reserves and doing other things that that turning his back on the climate change activists that he tried to appease. But see, the problem is when he first came in, he didn't know what he was doing at all. So he just went ahead, tried to appease environmental groups. Then the price of oil and gas skyrocketed. Then he said, oh my God, these are geopolitical issues. Because he miscalculated as always. From the botched Doha agreement to his botched energy policy. He's like, the, this man literally is. After Bush, because George W. Bush is the worst president in history, in my book. Just because of the damage that he did through his foreign policy. But, I mean, Kerry, Car Clinton, Biden voted for, the, Bi voted for that foreign policy. But mashed potato brains comes in and says, we're going to save the planet. Then, within a year, fossil fuels are at all-time highs. Then he says, oopsie, flood, flood the country with strategic oil reserves, and then blame oil companies after you've made it impossible for them to operate. Or very difficult, at least, for them to operate. But here, Biden's approval rating sinks to new low. Trump was marked, markedly more popular at a similar point in his presidency. Right there. It's right there. Trump was markedly more popular 
at a similar point in his presidency. Okay? It's right there. D. Corber, thank you so much. It's right there, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it. Now, it's very difficult for me to understand why, why smart people who dislike Trump can't differentiate between the media reaction to Trump, the media onslaught, like the 24-7 hysteria from the day he won in 2016. From the day he defeated uh, the Clinton until today, it's been nonstop, and that's what's really hurting the country. You can't have me. You can have freedom of speech. That's fantastic, and it'll be difficult to prove that some of these uh, publications or late night talk show hosts are like, you know, basically working for the Democratic Party. But if there's any coordination at all, that's that's a campaign finance violation at least. If you want to go ahead, if you want to work for the Democratic Party, then have the contract or have the arrangement um, out in the open. If you're the New York Times and the Washington Post, then tell the world that you are either in cahoots or you, you know, have a close relationship with Democratic uh, politicians or the Democratic National Committee. Don't just say that you are exercising your First Amendment right as media. I mean, be honest. Just say you're li you, you, you are a publication composed of only liberal Democrats, not one supporter of Trump. There's not one Trump supporter at the New York Times. Not one. You would have historically some conservatives at the New, at the New York Times or the Washington Post or the Atlantic or Vanity Fair or Esquire. You'd have people voting Republican. Okay? Not one person at CNN or MSNBC or Washington Post or the New York Times would be voting Republican in two years. Not one. And that's, that's, that's not good for society when you have media siding almost entirely with, one, with the Democratic Party. Because then you get, this, you get this hysteria, this contempt, this disdain, where tr people truly believe Trump is like the Antichrist. But half the electorate still likes him because half the electorate knows he did a lot of good things in terms of policy. Herschel Ballard, to my super chat. Herschel, thank you. Thank you. Alexandro, hello. You have a situation, ladies and gentlemen, where media does not reflect American society. It only reflects the viewpoints of liberal Democrats. That's it. That's why you have friendships. That's why you have like liberal Democrats who are obsessed with Trump disowning friends and family because they truly believe that media is giving them reality. Like they think the New York Times and CNN, MSNBC, the Washington, they think the Washington Post is unbiased. They, they don't realize that we have. Most of most media is an ex most of media is an extension of the Democratic Party, so the manner in which Trump is covered is going to be different from the manner in which uh, Biden or anyone else is covered. They don't get that. The, people don't see that, and like it's really interesting too when you have like really smart people, like historians, and, like you know, really see super intelligent people who look at Trump like and they're in like different fields and you'll have these like you know very very famous atheists looking at Trump and I can't believe he lies so much it's, it's, we've never seen this before yeah we've never seen the Washington Post have a running tally of one candidate and not a running tally of another candidate oh well that's because he lies so much no that's because uh the Washington Post ignores or overlooks uh, lies by omission or absurd tales from Democratic politicians. So when Joe Mashed Potato Brain says, well, it's the oil company's fault, or it's the gas station owner's fault, or um, it's the fault of uh, Vladimir, or it's, it's, they don't, there's no running tally. There's no, li oh, li oh, there's no three and a half, four Pinocchios with Joe. It's only, oh my God, Trump, Trump. They 
said that Trump lied about how good his economy was doing. But they, but the Washington Post never said that that they said that Trump lied about how good the economy. This is how petulant some journalists are. They went after Trump for embellishing perhaps his record when we had like record breaking economies, record low unemployment, hundreds of thousands of new manufacturing jobs, GDP was up, people were people were like prospering economically. And then they said, oh, well, we actually had a better time, uh, you know, in this time period or that time period. But with, you don't see the same, this, the same type of Washington Post article with Joe Biden. We have record high gas prices. It is, is a, it's a direct consequence of his executive orders and his policies that, uh, that forced oil and gas associations and 14 states to sue him. He's literally being sued by the oil and gas industry, like literally, and, and the states where these industries reside or where these like refineries and oil companies reside. Okay, not just federal leasing, a whole bunch of policies. A pause on federal leasing. Why would you put a moratorium on federal leasing making it diffi more difficult for these oil and gas companies to operate at a time when you need them the most, after you ended economic activity. But see, again, the fact-checking organizations are not going to really go after Joe for this. Like, you have to understand, the worst lies that Trump told are nothing compared to the lie of Joe not knowing Hunter was making millions using the family name, promising access to the United States government and and giving that access. Meeting at the White House. Meeting at the White House and, and like 19 other government buildings with his business associates. Why on earth, this is according to the New York Post, why on earth is, is um, Hunter meeting business associates at the White House? Where's the New York Times condemning this? Where's CNN and MSNBC condemning this? Could you imagine if you had Eric Trump or Donald Trump Jr. meeting at the White House with business associates, and then you have corresponding emails saying, hey, how can you use your influence uh, on the company's behalf? Could you imagine? I mean, they have no problem putting two and two together. They think, for, forget about putting two and two together. They make such absurd leaps of logic based on hearsay and gossip. You don't even have to have direct evidence. Like emails are, you could say they're circumstantial, but they they really could be used as direct evidence. These are emails, and these are and, and also the millions of dollars going into his bank account from these organizations throughout the world. Why are they paying Hunter? Why on earth are they paying Hunter? They're paying Hunter because um, they know they want something. They literally want something, and they're they're getting what they want. But then with Trump, you have this here. This always takes place. In, in 2016 also, there, were, there was an article in the New York Times. There's an article in the New York Times that, um, that, that stated uh, Michael Flynn's phone call, the Bureau found no, no wrongdoing. And then he still got, he still got, uh, indicted and charged with lying to uh, uh, agents, which, by the way, he didn't even know he was under investigation. He should never have met with those agents, but that was a setup. Then you have these journalists at the New York Times and other places saying, oh, well, George Papadopoulos met with Alexander Downer. So what? Who cares? Why wasn't Alexander Downer ever, uh, didn't, why didn't he testify to Congress? Because Democrats don't want him to. Just like they didn't want Joseph Mifsud to, because every time one of their mysterious sources testifies, they recant, retract their stories. They started investigations to set up and frame Trump based on zero evidence, just like the committee now with Liz Cheney. So Bureau finds no evidence, say it slowly, Liz Cheney and Democrats and Never Trumpers and Kinzinger finds no evidence. That Trump and his allies were directly involved. No evidence or organized or with, or with organizing the chaos. No evidence. Okay? 
it found no evidence, meaning we shouldn't even have had this committee. The only evidence they have is Cassidy Hutchinson saying that he tried to commandeer a a limousine. No, this is my wonderful limo. This is an amazing limo. It's mine. I'm going to throw my ketchup at the wall. This is amazing ketchup. That's all they have. That's all they have is hearsay and gossip. My God. I mean, they, but they've been doing this for six years. Like, the New York Times, the Washington Post, they used to be different. Even 2015, they were different. In 2014, they were different. There were, like, this is the way they, like, check this out. This is the way, and, and hopefully Trump, within, like, tomorrow, announces his bid for the presidency. Tell your friends about this channel because it's going gonna, it's gonna to heat up. Here, Paul Ryan, this is the coverage when media was happy, when media was happy with, Paul, with, with, with the establishment and the system, we had Politico. Paul Ryan picks spark dumbbell debate. This is the extent, people. This is the extent. Time Magazine. This is, this is how we went from Paul Ryan close-ups of when he was working out to Trump throwing his, he threw his, his dinner at the wall. No, no, he threw his dinner at the wall. Impeach, indict, prosecute, prosecute. National security. Hey, your, your, uh, grandchildren will know the name of Cassidy. Uh, something, whatever her name is, a fantastic human being. Look, Australian newspapers, look. Okay. Politico, Time Magazine. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can't get, but this is Time Magazine. Paul Ryan all pumped up for his close-up. Yeah. Paul Ryan pumped up and glistening. Sweaty and glistening, Paul Ryan. Not, he worked with the Kremlin and he was getting, he was getting, you know, showers in a Moscow hotel room. Oh, no. This is when media was happy. Because they knew Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney would get obliterated. Or actually, they didn't care if they even won. It would be just, you know, the system. Let's see if we can get something. This is the Daily Beast. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, how times have changed. Oh my, the Daily Beast. Wrote an unethical hit piece on me just because I supported Bernie Sanders. That's literally the oh my only sin. Now I support Donald Trump because I want a great economy. Unlike the dystopian nightmare in terms of economy and foreign policy we have now. Paul Ryan's extreme workout. Oh my god, look at that. He's playing. Oh look, he's playing flag football. Wow, it's fantastic. Oh, who is that behind him? And what is he doing? Oh my goodness. Are you sure they're just playing football? The new GOP vice presidential candidate is, is just as zealous about zapping body fat as he is about slicing government spending. Could you believe this? Now it's authoritarian democracy! Kremlin! Trump! He's going to devour the devourer of worlds. He's going to, oh my God, the rule of law, the rule of, here's <laughs> the Helsinki conference. Oh, Heinz 57 ketchup. Oh my God, he threw his, he threw his, his dinner at the wall. <laughs> he tried to commandeer a limousine. I mean, we've known now that he's just not unfit. He's unfit. He's unfit for office. He's unfit for office. Six years, no, ten years ago. Literally ten years ago. Paul Ryan. Yeah. That's right.
The new GOP vice president is just as zealous as za- about zapping body fat. Wow. Wow. 10 pound weight. If you want to see, not the big deal or whatever, but I, I do 100 pound dumbbell chest press on, uh, it's on the, um, where is it on? Yes, the Nuclear Confrontation Channel. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you have, you have, um, where, where else? Paul Ryan workout. Here, let's just do Paul Ryan workout. Look at the, look at the difference. Like where, could you imagine if Trump, like they said, like, if they, I, I like the golf course. In fact, he clubbed them with his, with one of his golf clubs. He slaughtered them. He slaughtered them. Call the egg. Did you hear? Somebody's proctologist, neighbor, friends, hairstylists, cardiologists, accountants, second cousin twice removed, said Trump took his driver out of his golf club and clubbed baby seals on the way to the golf course. <laughs> Who does this? Uh, impeach! Prosecute! Meanwhile, Paul Ryan sparks a dumbbell debate pick. What happened to this coverage? What happened to this media? No, Lord. Great. We had 300 people. All right, could you, this is the extent, this is the extent of negative coverage that they, they didn't even get negative coverage, Mitt Romney or, or Paul, Paul Ryan. This is the extent, Paul Ryan picks spark dumbbell debate. Wow. Paul Ryan is a body by P90X, and he agreed to show it off to Time Magazine. Yeah. Well, look at that body by P90X. Yeah. All right. A good Republican. What happened to the Republicans who used to work out with 40-pound weights, not really 10-pound weights? 70 people, what happened? Down to 70, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get kicked off, please, please try to jump back on. Sorry about that. We were doing pretty well up until. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ryan is a body by P P90X, and he agreed to show it off to Time Magazine. But not everybody's pumped, no pun intended, about the pics. In a photo series taken in December 2011, Ryan has shown lifting dumbbells while wearing a red baseball cap backwards and elaborate earbuds. Um, so, I mean, this is like, where's the Where's the, the, where's the Paul Ryan workout media? Where's that media? Here, then there's, check this out. Then there's Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney dog car. What our fascination with, with, 
with Mitt Romney's dog says about us. Okay, so here. If the worst you'd have is Devo an announces Mitt Romney dog song. Don't roof rack me, bro. Remember, sh <laughs> this is the extent of what like Hollywood would do with the music industry. You'd have Devo maybe condemning Mitt Romney's putting his dog on the top of his car. That's it. That's it. Here. I mean, here, hold on a second. Oh, Paul Ryan, oh, sorry, Paul Ryan, work out here. Mitt Romney dog. Mitt Romney dog incident. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, they, they've been saying that Trump is, is the end of democracy and 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 oh my God, he's he's going to devour planets and he worked with the Kremlin and he's now, he tried to overthrow democracy and the worst they had with, and he didn't because they don't have any evidence that he did. Uh, that whole summer with one to two billion dollars in property damage. Then you get this bizarre rebuttal. Well, the vast majority didn't. Yes, I understand that. What What would it matter if one out of a hundred people were responsible for one to two billion dollars in property damage? Why would that? How would that be a rebuttal? There's still one to two billion in property damage. Nineteen lives lost. My God, it's like no basic logic. But anyway, Mitt Mitt Romney dog incident. Dog on roof? What what was it like for Romney's pooch? This is the best. This is the high this is the extent. Do you understand? Scientists believe dog likely experience an uncomfortable trip. Wow. Wow. This is the extent well, this is an 08, but <clears throat> scientists believe. You had to ask scientists. This is the problem with media. We asked experts, scientists even, if the dog was happy about being on top of the roof of a car for 20 hours. You don't need a scientist for this, these things. You, can, you, you actually can pretty much make, a edu make an educated guess that the dog was not happy. Leave, you, know, you don't need to call Stephen Hawking. God. God. Romney dog on car story proves to be his critic's best friend, right? Dogs against Romney. <laughs> the dogs against Romney. Uh, <laughs> uh, yet again. Wow. I will not be happy unless we have 15 of those little glitches. Thank you, YouTube. Fantastic. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. So. Mitt Romney. We have video of Mitt Romney tying his dog to the roof of the car. Mitt Romney drove to Canada with dog on his roof. Could you imagine if Trump did that? Could you imagine if Trump did that? This is the extent. Trump. Violating the Eighth Amendment put his dog on his car roof. Mitt Romney admits to 12-hour trip with dog on roof. I mean, no accusations of working, being installed by another country. <laughs> or, hey, hello, exactly, Paul Ryan, Mr. America. <laughs> oh, my God. So, could you imagine, exactly, the salty constitutionalists, could you imagine... 
And Romney, Seamus loved the car roof. Our dog loved the car roof. What are you talking about? A bunch of communists in media. Look, look at the difference in media coverage. Look at the difference. My God almighty. And then you have pe uh, Trump. He is, he is something that he's, a, he's an authoritarian we haven't seen since the 30s and 40s. And they distort historical record. My God. God, they distort historical record. It's unbelievable. Dogs against Romney. Evo unleash a song about Mitt Romney's dog. Here in my car. Do, 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 This is the worst they did. The New Yorker. They put Rick Santorum on the top of the roof of the car. Like, okay. Go read a New Yorker article on Trump. It's like he's this criminal mastermind. It, it, they've gone from, like, you know, liberal publication. They don't like Rick Santorum. They're putting him. He's now the dog on top of Romney's car. Oh, that's good. That's They've gone from that to... We've spoken to experts saying that Trump wants to devour the uh, democracy. Devoured him. He worked with the Kremlin. He, he orchestrated an undermining of our civilization. He tried to overthrow our civilization, Trump. And that's, that's the difference. See, that's the point. That's the reason why... That's the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why people don't like... Uh, Elizabeth, hello. Um, that's the reason why people don't really, half the country doesn't care about the apoplectic and hysterical media coverage. By the way, go to a minute, because I know that like YouTube will demonetize the segment, so I won't even do it, but go to like 259 on this Ted Cruz link, this Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz grills. FBI and DOJ about January 6th, so I want to abide by YouTube policies. Just go ahead and read it. I mean, watch it on your own free time. The bureau official that he's speaking to will not answer the question of how many agents or government officials were there. You don't have to put two and two together, okay? And you better believe if they indicted Trump like Liz Cheney wants, you better believe that uh, that would be one of the most important issues. Like Trump would say, I want these agents to testify. It's just Senator Ted Cruz grills. Senator Ted Cruz grills FBI and DOJ about January. So Ted Cruz here and there does something like he's he's you know periodically doing something really good. Periodically he does some really good things, Ted Cruz. But Luke Saint Martin, hello. But, I mean, we have a recession now. Atlanta GDP uh, tracker shows U.S. economy is, is likely in recession. We're already in a recession, according to the Fed's GDP tracker. Um, wow, U.S. recession already six months old, says Fed model. By the way, the third quarter of this year, that's a huge issue. The third quarter. When is there going to be positive economic growth, okay? When is there going to be positive economic growth? Is it going to be, is it going to be fourth quarter, third quarter? Because, like, I don't really, um, I don't see how the economy is going to do any better than it is now. So, I mean, the question now is like, and we'll go 10 minutes more, ladies and gentlemen. 
Um, the question now is, like, what is... Oh, you know, real quickly, Trump should announce on the 4th of July. <laughs> he should announce tomorrow. The whole planet. That would be amazing. How awesome would it be if he announces on the 4th of July? Could you imagine, like, the 4th of July barbecues for wonderful, morally superior, highly educated, oftentimes apoplectic li liberal Democrats? They'd be, like, eating hot dogs and hamburgers and, like, feeling nauseous. Like, no, the orange man is just running, rooting the barbecue, no. Trump is going to, um, Donald Trump's going to run again. He could be grow in the next Grover Cleveland. And I don't see, like, you know, I'm not going to make any prediction because <laughs> there are so many curveballs. We'll leave it at last. Curveballs, sliders, and under normal circumstances, he should have no problem being the next Grover Cleveland. No problem at all. Well, let's leave it at that. It's like you have people who would, there, there are people out there, ladies and gentlemen, who would much rather, most of media too, because media, like, if there's a recession, the top, like, editors at these, editors at these publications, um, Exactly, Donnie, exactly. Trump should announce his run while barbecue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he said, he, he, yeah, he should totally do that. He should totally do that. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. He totally needs to do it. Mikey, hello. He should be in front of a barbecue and he should be like, this is the most fantastic uh, barbecue, hamburgers, look for all you vegetarians, fantastic. And he should just do it. He should just do it. And he should go on like a long rant on Truth Social. <laughs> <laughs> which would then be, be be copied and pasted on every Twitter account and like, oh my God, the horror. No, he's running again. No. Exactly, the Diet Coke. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Think about, because everything changes now. Everything changes now. Once Trump officially, once Trump officially says he's running again, now the ball is in the court of the Democratic Party. Who do they run? Kamala Harris, J mashed potato brains Joe. I mean, people already made the mistake. You voted for Joe. I mean, this is the way Democrats would look at things. You voted for Biden. You deserve everything from layoffs to. High gas prices to crime, homelessness. Blah, blah, blah. That's the way a liberal Democrat, many of them, would react. Many. Because that's the way. If you don't do this and you suffer, you deserve it. Blah. And that's pertaining to other topics we won't get into. <laughs> we won't get into. But I mean, if you, cho if you chose, if you had a choice between Biden and Trump, and you chose Biden, look what you chose. Look at the economy. Look at foreign policy. Everything that's taking place is directly the result of his policies. That's why he's getting sued by environmental organizations. And this is hilarious. He's getting sued by not only environmental organizations. Hold on. But also oil and gas companies. The man can't, he can't make anybody happy. And it's not because he's doing like the right thing. He's just like literally pandering. When you, when your life is spent just pandering, you're not going to do. You're not going to do the right thing. You'll, you'll, you'll anger everybody. Environmental groups sue Biden administration for failing to consider climate change and oil leasing. So it's like, it, it, 
it, he's getting <laughs> he's getting sued by everyone over Western drilling permits. In the lawsuit, uh, they're saying, "Oh, the endangered the endangered species act." It's like, well, had you not gone in with a moratorium on federal leasing and done a whole and, and and signed a whole bunch of executive orders causing oil and gas associations to sue you you wouldn't now you wouldn't be sued by these environmental groups because you wouldn't have tried to implement these failed policies that they got used to exactly the more things change the more they say the same luke saint martin thank you luke eric hello everybody here hello But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you look, ladies and gentlemen, and it's just a matter of time before, I mean, the the long game favors Trump because they don't have evidence that he did anything. So, and if they, it'll be interesting, like, I do think there's a possibility, even despite the fact they have no evidence, that they just, it, it is possible they try some like despicable way to kick him out of 2024. 20, uh, but then you have DeSantis, so they still can't win. Then you have DeSantis, so and they still can't win. So it's like, you know. So... It'll be very interesting. Not again. Are you serious? Right as we're approaching 300 people, it just always happens. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exactly, Carl, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. I think we're going to call it an evening. Have a wonderful, safe, awesome 4th of July. Um, I'm going to try, to, I'll do a lot, I'll do another upload right before, um, right before this, um, right before midnight tonight. So, and also check out the Nuclear Confrontation channel. I'll have, um, an upload in about an hour or so on there. Hit subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to my super chat. Everybody here, Paul, everyone here, thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a, a senior to loop and hello, happy, happy fourth. Luke, Eric, G Corber, everybody here. Thank you, G. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Happy fourth of July. Have a safe and beautiful fourth of July. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. I should have a live stream at around uh, JG. JG. Happy 4th of July to you, my man, JG. Happy 4th of July, JG. Be here tomorrow, everybody. Um, I'll have some, I'll have probably have like an 8 p.m.